Known as Teflon Don and sometimes even Dapper Don, fame mobster John Gotti shot to fame in the 1980s as the head of the Gambino crime family, one of the most powerful mafia clans in all of America at the time. Gotti was eventually jailed in 1992 and sentenced to life in prison without parole after being charged with five murders, conspiracy to commit murder, racketeering, obstruction of justice, tax evasion, illegal gambling, extortion, and loan sharking. Ten years into his sentence, he die from throat cancer in prison at the age of 61 years old. Prior to his downfall, Gotti was never shy about flaunting his wealth. He not only liked to splash his money on nice cars and fancy clothes, he also funneled a whole bunch of it into an old Westbury, New York property. The longtime Gotti family home that was heavily featured on his daughter Victoria Gotti's reality TV series, Growing Up Gotti. Victoria inherited this mansion from her father and then called it home along alongside her three sons, John, Carmine, and Frank, filming her own series for three seasons until the mid-2000s. Then, 10 years later, the FBI would raid the family's property as well as their auto parts business. The reasons for these searches weren't entirely clear at the time, but it would later come to light that the feds were investigating accusations of tax fraud involving Victoria's three sons. Since that 2016 raid, the family's multi-million dollar mansion was foreclosed on after Victoria failed to make good on $650,000 in mortgage payments. Now the Gaudi family home is a glorified ghost town that one YouTuber was brave enough to venture into. But before I show you the horrendous state this home is now in, first I want to take you back to its heyday when it was still being used by one of America's most notorious crime families. Formerly described as a majestic site with more than four acres of manicured lawns and towering trees, the Gaudi family home, located in the Long Island village of Old Westbury, once boasted an exquisite custom brick exterior with a ton of old world charm and further elaborate details. Originally built in 1993, the land the home rests on was bought in 1989 for $175,000. The family then built a two-story, five-bedroom, five-bathroom home on the property with over 5,000 square feet of space. The estate backs up to the service road of the very busy and loud Long Island Expressway, which is kind of unfortunate. So to make up for that, the home includes double drive gates, a dark bottom swimming pool, a number of tile patios, long stretches of lawn, or stables and paddocks, children's playground, a tennis court, a gazebo on a small island, and even a go-kart track. That might sound like one busy exterior, but the inside is even more curious. Upon arrival at the family home, guests are immediately greeted by an entrance hall with a too low ceiling and twin curving staircases that were no doubt used for a dramatic entrance or two by Victoria throughout the years. Then there's a large living room that features cherry wood floors, a grand piano, a whole bunch of oversized sofas, and an entire wall covered in floor to ceiling mirrors. Over in the dining room, you'll discover a ceiling that's been stenciled with flowers, much like the living room, alongside some inlaid wood floors and morose colored drapes. As for the kitchen, its tiled floor and mirrored built-in buffet display cabinet kind of stick out like a sore thumb. There are also a few iron stools around a pill-shaped work island. Also located on the main floor, you'll find an office with a fireplace and black walls that might be the chicest looking space in the whole house. Unfortunately, the opposite might be said about Victoria's former master bedroom, which is draped in gauzy textiles over her four-poster bed, which sits on a literal pedestal. Then there's her rose and gold colored bathroom, which has been overloaded with silk and plastic floral arrangements and baseboard heating elements. All in all, you were probably expecting this place to be a lot more elegant, weren't you? After the family's legal problems cropped up in the late 2010s, Victoria would try to sell this home, but to no avail. Instead, the estate was foreclosed on and the bank would snatch this property in October 2022 for $2.65 million. But about a year prior, one YouTuber ventured onto the former Gotti property and wound up shocking historians all around the world with what he found. In October 2021, YouTuber Kyle McGrath Grant explored the Gaudi crime family's deserted estate, and what he found was incredible. The eerie footage he captured there showcased a home that had fallen into a state of disrepair in the years since the FBI originally raided the property. Not only were old vehicles left all over the exterior grounds, stashed among the estate's overgrown shrubs, but the pool and hot tub combo with a swim-up bar have long been left in a dirty state of abandonment. Inside, 
clothes shoved into garbage bags were left weirdly in the middle of the home's front foyer alongside an empty fish tank. As for the kitchen, cups as well as other dishware and utensils were found scattered across the granite countertops, and the dining room was left largely alone with most of its furniture still standing. Elsewhere, some gaudy family suits are still hanging in one of the bedrooms, while the nearby study holds shelves that are jam-packed full of dust-covered books. There's even a guest house in the property that was left with a fully set kitchen table, an all-black bathroom, and strangest of all, an abandoned safe. But the craziest thing that Kyle managed to discover was a secret room hidden behind a bookshelf on the upper floor of the guest house. Inside that space, Kyle found shirts on coat hangers and pile of clothes as well as photos, including a handwritten card from Victoria. It's not entirely clear what Gotti might have used this space for, although based upon what was discovered inside of it, the likelihood is that it was simply an extra storage space. In a sense, this state of this property is an accurate representation of the family that once called it home. Ever since 2016, the Gotti crime family has more or less disappeared from the limelight. Now, the only the only member of the family making news is Gotti's grandson, John Gotti III, who you might have heard of after he got involved in a post-match brawl with his boxing opponent, Floyd Money Mayweather. I guess the Gotti family reputation for extreme violence is still being upheld to this day, just in a different type of way. If you want to learn more about that story, be sure to check out our famous news feed on Instagram. All right, everyone, that's going to bring this latest house tour to a close. Thanks so much for watching, and before you head out, consider answering the following question. Have you ever been brave enough to explore an abandoned building? If so, let me know what you found there in the comments below. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications to make sure you never miss a video. My name is Kara and if you feel like checking out another celebrity abode then stay tuned because coming up I'm going to be taking you inside the homes of different types of criminals entirely. The recently incarcerated Danny Masterson. I'll see you next time. Bye. Former That 70s Show actor Danny Masterson was convicted on two counts of sexual assault on May 31st, 2023. Hollywood convicted of rape. Danny Masterson, who starred on That 70s Show, was just found guilty on two counts of forcible rape uh, involving two different women. Jurors were deadlocked on a third count. After a lengthy criminal proceeding that would see three women accuse him of taking advantage of them from the confines of his former Los Angeles home. This ended a years long battle that lasted two trials. Back in 2022, the jurors found themselves hung on all counts against Masterson, with most leaning towards an acquittal. But prosecutors sought a retrial and in their second attempt, they focused on not only the drugs Danny used the women, but how he isolated them at his home to make them feel more vulnerable. Yes, sir. We go over the top three moments from week one of actor Danny Masterson's rape trial. Journalist Tony Ortega comes back on to explain it all. After a week of deliberations, the jurors returned to convict Danny had assaulted two of the three women, while being hung on the third count stemming from allegations made by Chrissy B, Masterson's former longtime girlfriend. As you might imagine, the formerly popular actor hasn't appeared on TV for quite a while, and it's been rumored that he's been hiding out in the semi-remote town of Santa Ynez with his wife, actress Bijou Phillips, by his side. Now Masterson is facing potentially as many as 30 years behind bars, and he's due back in court at the beginning of August to learn his sentencing. Needless to say, this is one demoralizing story made all the more unusual because of how Danny used his own home to shield himself while perpetrating some awful crimes. If you want to hear more about what happened behind Danny Masterson's walls, then keep watching. But I'll warn you, this story isn't for the faint of heart. Danny picked up his longtime Los Angeles home back in July 1998 for just $500 $160,000. Boasting a Spanish design with amazing views, vintage craftsmanship, and a whole bunch of character. From its dramatic front door to its marble and goldly fireplace, this place was an architectural lender. Danny would spend much of the next decade calling this place home, taking full advantage of the property's master suite with a retractable projection screen, large kitchen, 
kitchen, as well as its multi-terrace yard with a pool and jacuzzi, turning the whole estate into something of a social hub. But that's not all he turned it into. According to a tipster who once spoke with Herb Los Angeles back in 2007, Danny's house had a few other notable details as well. For one, nearly 25% of the art in the home was said to be drawings, photos, or sketches of himself. But the strangest and creepiest extra he had installed were 17 interior cameras, planted club style, and smoked glass orbs that monitored every room of his home. Danny could even watch the footage from the control grid in his master closet. So is it any wonder that according to his accusers, this became the scene of all three crimes he's now been found guilty of? Danny's first accuser claims that she went to his house to pick up a pair of keys from him sometime around April 2003. When she got there, she saw Danny was entertaining guests and decided to join in on the fun with some mutual friends. But about 20 minutes after she received a mixed drink from Masterson, her vision became blurry and the actor pushed her into the jacuzzi. Afterwards, Danny brought the woman upstairs and proceeded to assault her by washing her off in the shower and then putting her in his bed in the master suite. At that point, she was too weak to fight him off and he threatened her with a gun after she tried to pull away. Danny's second accuser claimed that she was also drugged and then assaulted by the actor in November 2001, five years into their relationship together. After angering Danny by yanking hard on his hair in an attempt to get him to leave her alone, a month later he attacked her while she was asleep in bed and unable to defend herself. The third accuser, who would speak at Danny's trial, told a strikingly similar story. One night, Danny demanded that she come over to his house. When she arrived, he told her to remove her clothes and not wanting any possible violence to take place in retaliation, she listened. Afterwards, she was afraid to go to the authorities due to her membership in the Church of Scientology, the same faith that Danny's also part of. The last of these incidents took place in 2003. Four years later, Danny would list this property for $1.59 million before eventually finding a buyer. Afterwards, Danny would distance himself from the scene of his former crimes by moving into a new home in the Hollywood Hills. Believe it or not, but in a strange twist of fate, the new home Danny Masterson moved into had nearly as shady a reputation as the one he left. That's because Danny's new estate was previously owned by none other than Chuck Berry. Originally constructed in Los Angeles' quiet Bronson Canyon neighborhood back in 1923, Chuck Berry lived in this house for years, throughout both the 80s and the 90s, before a series of sexual harassment charges and assault allegations would hit the musical superstar. These eventually led him to selling the property in 2000 for only $570,000. Seven years later, the property was bought by Danny Masterson and his wife Bijou Phillips for much more than that, $3 million to be exact. Secured behind spiked gates and high hedges, not to mention some equally dense greenery, Masterson sure likes his privacy, huh? Anyways, this circular estate spans two thirds of an acre. The property boasts a sprawling four bedroom, three bathroom Spanish revival style main house with close to 4,600 square feet. It might have been built a hundred years ago, but to this day, the home still maintains much of its original architectural details, including a colonnaded front porch, a carved wood front door set into a pointed archway, and well-preserved woodwork, antique fireplaces, as well as semicircular windows. Upstairs, the guest bedrooms are ample in size, while the primary suite includes a private sitting and dressing room as well as a sun-flooded bedroom with an updated vintage-style bath and access to a gigantic terrace. Downstairs, each room flows from one living or entertainment space into another. For instance, the living room with its carved stone fireplace also features coffered ceilings, while the formal dining room is surrounded by glass doors and links to the gray Eden kitchen by way of a butler's pantry. Outdoors, lush landscaping surrounds serene gardens as well as a swimming pool and a tennis courts. There's also a separate gated driveway that divides the main house from the detached garage that's been converted into a studio style guest apartment with kitchenette, bath, and a soundproof two room recording studio. Pretty gorgeous, right? Well, once the accusations against Danny were brought to light, he'd lose an unrelated lawsuit against his mortgage holders, which left him on the hook for nearly $2 million owed on this property. That forced him to list the home for $7 million. Property was later taken off the market before before being sold in 2021 for $6.2 million. Given Danny's lack of film and TV appearances over these past few years, not to mention his wife's too, it seems that likely whatever profit they made off the sale will have to last them a while. But 
With Danny's no doubt expensive legal fees now coming due, how much Bijou will be left with once Masterson is officially serving his sentence is anyone's guess. Usually these house tours are pretty lighthearted, but there was just no way I was gonna be able to tell you this story without taking it as seriously as it deserves. I have no idea what's gonna happen to Danny Masterson now, but by all accounts, whatever it is, he'll deserve it. And his days of living in the lap of Hollywood luxury are clearly over. Thanks for watching today's tour and before you head off consider answering the following question knowing what you do about danny will you ever go back and watch old episodes of that 70s show now let me know in the comments down below otherwise like subscribe and turn on your notifications to make sure you never miss a video my name's kara if you'd like to check out more celebrity homes before you're done then stay tuned to our look into the properties of laura preppin bye